like other states, Indiana has experienced its own energy transition over the past 20 years. Traditionally, coal serves as a significant energy source in Indiana. Until the early 2000s, coal accounted for 90 to 95 percent of Indiana's generation, but today makes up around 45 percent of our fuel mix. Natural gas, nuclear, wind, and other fuels account for the rest. As Indiana is one of the leading states in our energy transition, we are the second biggest wind state east of the Mississippi River and the seventh fastest growing solar state in the nation. This transition from coal can largely be attributed to various environmental regulations, including coal combustion residuals, PM ozone, nitrous oxide, sulfur dioxide, and ELG regulations. For decades, Indiana ratepayers enjoyed some of the lowest electric rates in the country. Part of this was due to Indiana's access to affordable coal. However, as continued environmental regulations were introduced on coal facilities, utilities made the necessary investments to keep them operating. These costs of investments impacted Indiana's price ranking, which went from being in the top five in the country of affordable rates to now in the 2020 to 29th in the country. With this changing generation mix and corresponding rise of customer rates, Indiana enacted a framework for the Indiana Commission to consider when making electric rate making decisions, commonly referred to in Indiana as the five pillars, which are reliability, affordability, resiliency, stability, and environmental sustainability. Indiana also passed a law that our electric utilities must have suitable generation secured and do not rely too much on the wholesale market, limiting capacity auction purchases to 15% of their needs. While the management of the electric grid requires teamwork, Indiana wants to ensure utilities are doing their part to be self-sufficient. On customer choice, Indiana protected customers by allowing them to choose natural gas. The Indiana Commission also submitted joint comments with our agency partners, IDEM and the OUCC, the Consumer Counselor's Office, regarding the EPA's proposed rulemaking setting new standards for greenhouse gas emissions for electric generating units. Our concerns included a focus on the proposed rule's unrealistic timing, particularly in the context of the utility's state-sanctioned and regulator-reviewed integrated resource plans. It is not obvious that the proposed environmental benefits outweigh the other pillar considerations that state regulators must consider to ensure safe, reliable service at affordable rates. Regarding reliability and in the spirit of cooperative federalism, we issued a general administrative order a couple years ago encouraging MISO and PJM's input into generation petitions before the Commission, and we provide them with comments as well. For example, Indiana believes stakeholders must find ways to streamline the interconnection queue processes while promoting market signals for capacity, dispatchable characteristics in ancillary services, and scarcity pricing. Indiana supports the adoption of these RTO efforts and support grid reliability and resiliency. Ultimately, this all highlights that energy policies should rely on state commissions management of 20-year planning horizons. Effective policy and regulations should allow us to be nimble, flexible, and adaptive on emerging energy issues that impact our state. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today and thank you for your service to this country. I'll be happy to answer any questions.